Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with our Blooming Catholic Life. And we're here with our second look at this scripture, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 35 and 36. It's really been touching my heart in the last couple of days, which is so funny because it's two verses and we didn't do nearly the amount of research that we normally do on context and definitions and looking at the concordances, but that's how it works sometimes. Sometimes it just immediately works on your heart. So let's begin as we always do. We're going to start with our St. Francis's prayer before the crucifix, which is listed in the back of our journal. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti Amen. Summe glorioso Deus, illumina tenebras cordis mehi et damihi fidem rectum. Spem certain et caritatem perfectum. Domini ut facium tuum sanctum et verox mandatum. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti Amen. <laughs> okay. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And whilst the voice was uttered, Jesus was found alone, and they held their peace and told no man in those days of any of the things which they had seen. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And while the voice was uttered, Jesus was found alone. And they held their peace and told no man in those days of any of the things which they had seen. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And while the voice was uttered, Jesus was found alone. And they held their peace and told no man in those days any of these things which they had seen. And two things are really, really jumping out at me here. One is that they held their peace. Peace is what really, the word that really jumped out at me when we looked at this scripture on Monday. And so we looked it up in the modern Catholic dictionary and really talked about peace. And so now I really wonder what that expression means to us. Hold your peace. We often think it means just to stay quiet, to not to say something when you really want to say it, um, either because it's inappropriate or not helpful. In this case, though, I have a totally different feeling of it. Like they probably had such a feeling of peace and serenity in that moment, and they held on to it dear as a great treasure that they weren't quite ready to share with anyone. We know that they do share it eventually, but in that moment, they just held on. And probably, like we hear about Mary, they were probably pondering these things in their heart. It doesn't say that probably because they're men. I don't know. Where do men ponder things? <laughs> Sorry. Where? Okay. You're prob I know there are men that watch this channel. Um, where do you ponder things? How do you ponder things? How does that expression sit with you? Yeah, so many times we think hold the peace. Uh, hold your peace means not to start an argument or say something senseless that's going to offend somebody. I don't think it would have done any of those things. They held their peace. I want to hold my peace. It's kind of, it's not quite recollection, but it's in there, right? Holding your peace. I know whenever I leave the Adoration Chapel, I always want to hold on to that feeling a little bit longer. So maybe this expression is going to mean something a little bit different to me from now on. Um, be interesting. I, I'd love to look at this at the Latin and the Greek, but I didn't have set up for that. I had no idea that was coming Um and honestly, I haven't done that in a little while, so I've forgotten those websites where I do that normally. I'll have to look that up. That's in my class notes from my Lexio Divina class, which, as you know, I took with the Institute for Ministry Formation. That is Father Boniface's spiritual director training program out at St. Vincent's Seminary in La Trobe, Pennsylvania, and it is offered online through St. Vincent's College and Seminary. Ah. <sighs> The other part that was really jumping out at me was when the voice of God the Father says, this is my beloved son, hear him. Because there are times in our lives where God really speaks to us and we truly hear him. I was watching a video just today, um, spiritualdirection.com, Dan Burke's YouTube channel. He was interviewing uh, Gabrielle. I think you may know his channel. I've recommended it before, Gabby After Hours. Big, big Marian devotion. And I've always thought that that young man was so devout and so holy um, in all his talks. And he said, 
Really, he went through recently a year of real spiritual aridity. He went through, I don't know if he called it a dark night, but definitely constellations were withdrawn. And what happened was he did the hard work. And now uh, I believe it's mental prayer just completely opened up to him. And it's a whole new level, a new world, a new experience, a new encounter with God is so much deeper and richer than it ever was before. And so similar to holding on to that peace, when we hear God, what do we do with that? What do you do with that? Do you immediately do that action? And that is something they were talking about. Um, and, and But in this case, the disciples did not do an action right now, except that the action was holding their peace. And again, I'm wondering what that meant to them, because I doubt that they just like didn't say anything. I don't think it was just the absence of talking. I feel like it had to be a lot more and was probably really working on softening their hearts and opening their ears to really hear the gospel message, which we know, we know from reading the gospel, even up in the Garden of Gethsemane and even beyond, they didn't, it didn't all sink in yet. But honestly, it was a lot to process. And I think all these puzzle pieces kind of had to come together in their brains and hearts. And I'll be honest, I don't know that human comprehension is capable of that without the gifts of faith, hope, and charity. Those are supernatural gifts given to us, right? We can increase our capacity to receive them, but they are gifts from God, much as contemplation is. Now, contemplation is used two different ways by different groups, even within the Catholic Church. But this one I'm talking about is when contemplation is an infused gift of God, um, there is the mental prayer where you're imagining yourself in a Bible scene or imagining a Bible scene or a character from the Bible, or you have a visual image of God as you're talking to him. And, and Gabi was saying that who he imagines Christ when he knows Christ doesn't really look like this person, but the person who he imagines when he is talking to Christ um, in his mental prayer. And sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second there. But that, that's a kind of contemplation. That's what the Ignatians call contemplation a lot of the times. But contemplation is a next step. When we talk about Lexio Divina, usually what I'm talking about, well, I'll say when I, when I talk about it, what I'm talking about is that you do the meditation, you do the prayer, right? You do the scriptural reading, you do the reading three times, you may look at all kinds of resources. You're going to visit this off and on throughout your week, and you're going to meditate on it throughout your day. And every now and then, you may just have a moment of like an insight or something that you know you could possibly, not possibly have figured out or come to, or that there's no way that that thought came from you. And that is that is an inkling, a tiny drop of, of contemplation, the gift from God. Right. It's just the fruit of all that that pondering, but not just that. It's the fruit of doing the hard work of opening your heart to receive more faith, hope, and charity. And I think that's where that contemplation comes in. You, of course, God could go to anyone at any time, but I think you have to do that hard work to increase your capacity. And then it's like all those puzzle pieces. Have you ever tried to do like a thousand piece puzzles on a TV tray. It's just not going to work. Those pieces are not going to fit together on that little TV tray. It's impossible. There's too many. They're not going to fit. It's not going to all come together. You may see a little piece here and a little piece there. And you may have some inkling of what's going on, but you're not going to get it until you get like a big dining room table and you really have some space to sit and move pieces. And maybe you work on this section at one time and this section another time. Then you're like, oh, I see where they go. And then you can put those together. So not just even just working at the framework in, you may be working on sections like, oh, I see these two pieces go together. Oh, and these three pieces go together. And you keep building them out until it all comes together. It makes sense. But you need room and time and space and a lot of grace to get that done, right? Um, and that's to me kind of like, and, and I'd say I'm making this up on the fly, but I don't feel like this is coming from me either. This is just where my understanding is at this moment, wherever that has come from. Increasing, increasing our receptivity of faith, hope, and charity is going to let those things we've been pondering, those things that God's been trying to tell us over and over, may start coming together for us and forming a more cohesive picture. And we may see things that we have never seen before. And there are probably things that Jesus has been saying plainly over and over and over. And we just couldn't make out what he said. We're like, are you speaking another language? What are you? Can you repeat that? And then suddenly you're like, 
oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful moment. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray that you all do that hard work. And what is one way? I will give you one simple practical tip on what you can do to help increase your receptivity uh, of those virtues. And that is going to be an act of faith, an act of hope, and an act of charity. I feel like almost every book of prayer is going to have them. Um, Let's see if I have a little guy here. I can see one. Oh, he's caught. Give me a second. I can see the gold edges of a book and a ribbon. So I'm just going to say, oh, this is our Blessed Sacrament Prayer Book by Father F.X. Lassance. Lovely book. I, I go to this all the time. I have lots of things marked. I do have a morning prayer marked. Um, let's see. I think it has the introduction and then the table of contents. And that always tricks me. I really need to put some kind of a, a marker right there. Yes. All day long. Let's see here. Oh, I saw an act of thanksgiving. Oh, act of faith, act of hope, and act of love. It's in the morning prayer. So I was in the right place. I just needed to turn one more page. Literally, one more page if I turned where I had my marker. Um, and this has... Yes, it just starts right here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Place yourself in the presence of God and adore his holy name. Most holy and adorable Trinity, one God in three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. An act of faith. O my God, I firmly believe that thou art one God and three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I believe that thy divine divine Son became man and died for our sins, that he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe these and all the truths which the Holy Catholic Church teaches, because thou hast revealed them, who canst neither deceive nor be deceived. An act of hope. O my God, relying on thy infinite goodness and promises, I hope to attain pardon of my sins, the help of thy grace, and life everlasting through the merits of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Redeemer. An act of love. O my God, I love thee above all things with my whole heart and soul, because thou art all good and worthy of all love. I love my neighbor as myself for the love of thee. I forgive all who have injured me and ask pardon of all whom I have injured. And then there is a lovely prayer to thank God for all favors and offer yourself to him. After that has a prayer to resolve to avoid sin and to practice virtue and to ask God for the necessary graces. So I'm going to invite you to get this book. I'm going to move my marker where it is to page 32. So they start on page 32. It's page 32, 33, and 34. You know, I've been working on these and I'm... Okay, now that I've found those, that I think I think that's what I needed. Okay, I think that's what I needed. Mm. God bless you, friends. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May the good Lord bless you. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.